Hey everyone, welcome back to the next part in the saga of the Pan-Europeans. So, I did shoot a whole bunch of video for this, but due to some amount of user error and a bit of organisational faux pas, it's disappeared. So I'm just going to shoot this again, we're going to pick up from where I am, which means there's been some work done to the bike that you might not have seen. First of all is the carburetors. They've been through the ultrasonic cleaner. The reason you didn't see the footage for that is because the old ultrasonic cleaner blew up and started to catch fire and so there was a huge drama that involved me running around like a pansy throwing things out of the garage. Good news is over there in shop you might just about be able to see. No, it's up there. A new ultrasonic cleaner which is exactly the same probably just as likely to catch fire but it's not on fire right now so we're good. The next thing is I'll have to take you over to the bike for Once we had the fairings off and we did the first start, I took the fuel tank out. This is not that fuel tank. I think I still have some footage of the old fuel tank being turned upside down, which if I do, I'll cut in here. Oh, hit me on the legs. <laughs> That was a royal disaster, full of rust. Rusty on the inside, rusty on the outside, and the fuel level sender was absolutely nuked as well. So, on eBay, I've been doing some shopping, and we've got ourselves a new tank here, which is in far better condition inside, and to boot, has a nicer cap and a nicer rubber around the top. While I've got your hand held, the other thing that I have done is I've started going around the frame and tidying up the rust scabs and spots in the joints. So that's been grinding them back to bare metal, adding some rust deactivator slash rust uh, inhibitor, then spraying over it with rust inhibiting uh, zinc based primer and black, or in some cases I've got some a uh, couple of different brands, Rusty's, uh, Co not Cooper, that's fence paint. Um, you know the one I mean some of that direct to rust paint as well so going belt and braces to give you an update on why we're at the point that we're at now with the bike um it's probably best to take you on a very quick journey i've had a look there we go around ebay and there are some fairly minty ones of these going for somewhere between 1500 quid and two grand now i know that's not going to be the case forever and i'm sure they're hiding their own demons but that kind of sets a budget for what we can bother to spend on this and so far I'm a couple of hundred quid in, what with a battery, fuel tank and some kind of essential maintenance bits while we've got the valley opened. So that's going to shape getting this thing back on the road really. I'm not going to bother with a nut and bolt restoration, both for the sake of my time and because if I wanted to start on something like that and have a pan-European to call my own and perfect, which if you've watched this channel for a while you know bikes tend to go through one after the other, so it's not likely it's going to be something I keep. But if I wanted that, there are much better bikes to start with than this one, with better service histories, less questionable things. Um, so this one is not going to get that. This one is going to get made safe. It's going to get made hopefully fairly reliable, but we're not going to bother going around and really tidying up things like this mouldy bracket. We'll give it a quick scrub down. We might even hit it with some paint, but we're not going to you know, fully rust treat, shot blast and powder coat everything, with maybe the exception of the wheels because they're in a pretty nasty state and they'll need something to make them roadworthy anyway. So next thing is, uh, while I've got the valley open, I'm going to do some essentials because I don't want it to be unreliable. And um, that is replacing the parts that I will show you now. So you might be able to see down here, these elbows um, they have O-rings that tend to leak and wet coolant down into the valley and the metal parts, the elbows on this, are slightly cracked. Previous owner had shoved rad weld in it a couple of times to try and solve that, so while we're down here we'll sort that out. I've also got new carb boots to go on. We'll decide what we're going to do about the um, sort of fancy Jubilee clips because I think we might need one or two new ones of those. We'll get the valley cleaned out, we'll get that done. We'll get the carbs back on and we'll see if we can get this thing running for an extended period of time just to warm it up and laugh at how much liquid probably pours out of that radiator. So I've been rambling for nearly four minutes. Let's go on. We're doing some actual wrench work and I think that's 
probably going to start with seeing if I can find a drain pan around here to get the coolant out. Sadly it's fairly late in the evening so I don't think anyone's going to appreciate the air ratchet mechanism. So I'm going to get a few extra steps in. Let's have a look at what's in here then. The answer is absolutely nothing. Let me go and release the radiator cap, maybe even a radiator hose, and we'll see if anything comes flying out. It's never a good sign when your radiator cap comes out dusty. Well, how about that? All of about 100 mm coolant. All right, I think it's time to move to the other side. We'll get the other radiator hose off. I'll bring you around here with me. This is the uh, the dark side of the moon. That's no moon. No, it's a sodding great touring bike. Um, but yeah, it's dark around here because the garage light's on the other side. So we'll get this off. I doubt it's going to free any more coolant, but then we'll take the um, mounting bolts of the radiator off and we'll get that out of our way so we can get a proper look at the front of the engine. I don't know if you can see this in the dark, but things are not looking great here. Back on the bright side, where I'm reliably informed you should always look, disconnected this connector, got rid of this cheeky little uh, thing that holds the fan wiring there, and we should be able to get the incredibly crusty radiator out. I'm not sure there's any save in this, but I don't know. Maybe we'll have a go. Looks like the end tanks have gone through though, so... Let's get our first look at the front of the engine. I mean... The crossbar is as crusty as everything else has been under here, but... Again, lots of dust and crud, but no serious structural rust. Got the screwdriver of truth on it. Oh, this bike really did live by the sea. Anyway, I think uh, I need to step back and decide where we're going to go from here. Possibly unbolting some exhaust and maybe looking at getting some of this um, lower frame away so that we can at least tidy up a bit. Then maybe we'll have a proper look in on the timing belt once we've got that off. Right, just been going for loosening off these bolts on this side that hold the kind of subframe assembly. So there's two there, there's one there, there's one hiding back there, and a couple back here. I've taken out these manifold nuts so they can get to this one, but there's a a bolt down here that, um, well, it's looking rather sorry for itself. It just says organically clearanced itself down from a 10 to something else. If I don't have to touch it, I'm not going to touch it, I probably will. But that's um, likely for an earlier time of day when I can make a load of noise with tools to um, try and fight that out. And when I find my mole grips. For now, I'm just going to keep spinning these. They're pretty tough. Um, I'll go and do the ones on the other side as well. Hopefully we can get this um, part of the cradle out. What I will need to remember to do, however, is do up this engine mount at the top here. Take the weight back onto the upper frame. So back in a moment. Okay, that's the crossbar out of the way. Um, so far I haven't had to remove the exhaust, but it looks like we might have to on the other side for the clutch cover. I'm deliberately not reading the manual here because it's far more fun to do it like this, but um, I think we should be able to slip this chem cover up and out of the way. Like so. See what it looks like in here. So far, so good. Cam bolts in slightly older, more knackered condition than I thought it was from the inspection camera. Bit dusty, bit crusty. So it's good that we've got a new one. But we don't look to have a water pump leak. We'll get the belt off and 
find out how the bearings are doing. I know I promised doing top end engine cooling stuff, but um, I'm just far too invested now, so I guess we'll carry on with this and see how we get on. First things first, we should be able to get the right socket. Kind of rather be doing this with an impact, to be honest. And um, I'm not taking anything important off. Well, I am. There's not as important. But um, what I'm trying to do here is get this plate off. so that we can see the timing marks. And then I just spin this back on again. It stops the pulley falling off when we rotate the engine. Okay, next thing we wanna get a socket on the engine itself. And we want to spin it over until all the timing marks line up. Although I'm probably going to have to do a little bit of cleaning up before I can even see as one of them is there, is a little tiny notch in the casing. And there will be an associated line that goes with it somewhere around this uh, cam pulley line or a dot. I think that's it there. I've had to turn your light on for this one, so sorry, I had to stop the video there. But if you look, there's a notch here and there is a teeny weeny little dot right there so we're all timed up i've got that one we've got that one and we've got the same on the other side as well so that's the engine in time now we can pop this spring off up here loosen the tension and check the state of everything okay spring released up here Tension has slid down after I undid the nut, and that should mean that we can do the scary bit and slip this belt off. And this will be exactly why you are supposed to take the clutch cover off. Doing this to the old belt is a sin. If you do it to the new belt, then you deserve it to snap. So that's the belt off, and you know it does look a lot more used than um, than it did, and it's got some rust spots on it. Presumably from where a little bit of water has sat in here. <clears throat> it's definitely um, it's definitely had a life, so I think we'll uh, replace that with a brand new one, which I have on the shelf, and I actually got on eBay for eight quid, which, you know, cannot complain. But before we do any of that, how are things feeling? There's no forward and back play in that water pump. Tiny weeny bit, um, it's smooth, but it's making a noise. That's probably to be expected though, because they're water lubricated. And um, there's no water in there at the moment. Smooth. Smooth. Okay, we might have gotten away with this then. Last thing, let's um, grab the new cam belt, preferably with some gloves on so that we don't trash it, and then compare it to the one we've just taken off. See if we're going to be okay to change it. Okay, here's the new one and the old one, and we're just going to line them up side by side so you can see. Their teeth are identically gapped, and then uh, this might not work from behind the camera. They're the same length as well. So so far so good. Is <laughs> the irony of having to wear gloves to protect the cam belt from my hands? So there's a post on the ST1100 Owners Club wiki forum sub site somewhere which gives you all of the 
cross-references for the original cam belt to other cam belts. So it will tell you it's a gate something 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 that's also a Conti CM259 which is also a something 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 else. Just buy a good brand. In this case, because of parts availability for a bike that's old, I had to get what I could. This is a Bosch belt. You'd be amazed what this cam belt also fits, but it's correct for tooth size, it's correct for length, it's correct for number of teeth. And so um, it can go on and do its job. And we can be happy that um, we've got idlers and a water pump that don't sound horrific and hopefully mean we shouldn't have to do any more taking apart of the engine than we've already done. What I'll do, I'll get this cam belt back in. We'll um, check it's all timed up still. All right, after a little bit of a fight, the belt is on. I am one tooth retarded everywhere. It's a funny phrase to say on camera. But um, yeah, as part of this, you kind of have to jiggle the pulleys about a little bit to get the belt on because it's not exactly the same length as the one that came off. Just a top tip when you get into this stage. So you always want to go from the non-tensioner side all the way around, bring the slack round to the tensioner, then pop it on. But what you might find is you need to put that pulley back from its timing mark a little bit, get the belt on, and then as you pull this up, it'll rotate that pulley back into place. This one sometimes, but um, what matters is when the belt is on, where everything is, you've got a tooth either way to play with. So, well, probably on most engines, don't know about this one. You're probably not going to break anything, but yeah, you might have to set that back a little bit. Just put a 12 mil on, crank it back, put the belt on. You'll probably see if I <clears throat> pull the belt on that it will jump forward a little bit as I do it. I don't know if you can see that, just kind of eased forward. As I slip the belt onto that tensioner, and if I just... Make sure everything's back where it's supposed to be, and then look at the timing mark. I'm now just ever so slightly ahead, and as I rotate this round, it's all going to line up, fingers crossed. And what we're going to do now is we're going to get a ratchet on the engine, and we're going to take it through a few rotations gently by hand, not with the star motor, so that we can feel if anything's wrong. Because if anything's wrong, we're going to have valves hitting pistons. We'll be able to feel that by hand and stop. So if it doesn't feel right, don't force it. Um, rather than putting it all back together, starting the engine, and then finding out we've made the mistake. So I've got the tensioner spring back on. I'm going to make sure the tension has moved up as much as it can. I'm going to lock that off, and then we'll go through two rotations and we'll make sure the marks all still line up. Okay, we're looking good. Everything lines up. Let's uh, put the belt keeper back on. Looks good. I think we'll pick it up next time. Thanks for watching.